Well, analysts said he would be defiant, and the president did not disappoint. He laid out a bold liberal agenda and threatened to veto any legislation that reached his desk that did not meet those standards. So what can we expect over the next two years? Richard Shelby is chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, and he joins me right now. Senator, good to have you on the program. Welcome. Good morning, Maria. What is your reaction to the president's tax proposals in his State of the Union last week? Well, I wasn't surprised because he has been proposing taxes in big government since he's been president. Now he's in his seventh year beginning, and I think you're going to see more and more of that. He's lost his first. He lost the majority that he had in the House. Now he's lost the majority he had in the Senate, so we have a Republican uh, Congress. So uh, I think a lot of his uh, proposals, one, we've heard them before. Most of them don't work. Uh, I don't believe they're going anywhere. Uh, I think the president, if he wanted to, he could work with us, but I think he was real defiant the other night. He was saying, look, it's my way or the veto. All right. Well, I want to talk more about that, specifically what you think won't work and, and, and how you believe we could move the needle on middle class families. So stay with us, Senator. A lot to talk about with you this morning, Senator Shelby. But first, middle class economics. It was front and center in the president's State of the Union this past week. Let's take a look at the actual state of the middle class today. Fox News senior correspondent Eric Sean joins us with that angle. Good morning to you, Eric. Good morning, Maria, and good morning, everyone. You know, it should be most of us, the middle class, but that's the group that's really being squeezed. Tonight, after a breakthrough year for America, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. The president laid out new economic proposals that he says will help the middle class, but they hit those who save for education and invest for the future, targeting those 529 savings plans that enable millions of parents to pay for college, while also hiking capital gains taxes. For the middle class, the American dream has been dimming. The Wall Street Journal found the medium household income of Americans adjusted for inflation fell from $56,800 in 1999 to just under 52000 in 2013. Even more shocking, the median family net worth, also adjusted for inflation, plummeted from $135,400 in 2007 to $81,200 in 2013. And that's a drop of 40 percent. And that Pew Research USA Today survey reveals the number of us who say we are middle class is now at an all-time low. According to Pew, 44 percent say they are middle class. That's down from 53 percent in 2008. One study found middle class buyers cannot afford the majority of homes in 20 percent of the nation's metro areas. And home ownership is now at its lower level, lowest level in two decades. And despite Obamacare, it turns out that family health care premiums have skyrocketed from just over 9,000 in 20, uh, 2003 to over 16,000 in 2012. And that's a whopping 73 percent increase. So it's no wonder then that the alternative rock band in California took a name, the middle class rut. One of its songs is called One Debt Away. You better call your brother to save your neck. You better get a real job and fix this wreck. You better claim your income like the real men do. You better send your 1099 to anyone you gave five bucks to. All in all, we're one debt away, one debt away. All in all, there's one more bill to pay. Maria. Amazing that you worked that <laughs> song in there. Eric, wow, how apropos. Thanks very much, Eric Sean. More now with Senator Richard Shelby. And, Senator, let's talk about the president's proposal and what you felt really uh, did not work already and what he's proposing already. What specific struck you? Well, first of all, uh, Maria, I believe uh, instead of helping the middle class, he's attacking the middle class. Uh, one, capital gains, he wants to, to run those up. That's a lot of people invest for the long haul. Uh, the Republicans want to lower the, that. He's also uh, proposed uh, taxes on the savings account where uh, middle class families are saving money to send their children to college later in life, and he's proposed a tax there. This is an attack on the middle class. It's not helping the middle class. Most of the middle class want to be left alone. They want to not be overtaxed and overregulated. He's doing quite the opposite. Right. A lot of 
A lot of his stuff is rhetoric. It's not going anywhere. A lot of those taxes, as I've said last week, they're dead on arrival, and I believe they're really dead. So if it's if it's all rhetoric, then then why waste the time, you know, triggering this conversation, you know, having a national conversation on on you know free college? Let's talk specific proposals here. And one of those proposals were uh, raising taxes or making the money that you put into the so-called 529 plans, which ha has been tax-free, uh, taxing that money. The issue here, of course, is that it's it's not just rich people that use these 529 plans, which, of course, encourage kids to go to college. I totally agree with you. Uh, I believe it's an attack on the middle class, the middle class worker who's trying to, to save money, uh, to have money when their children get college age to keep from having such a burden. Uh, college ex is very expensive. Uh, we know this. The president has been he's saying one thing and doing another. I think most people will see through that. I know the Republican Senate and House will. All right. So what do you think is the, is the answer then, Senator? I mean, we can't sit here and say, look, this is wrong that is wrong and this is wrong. We all know that the tax system is incredibly complex. What is the solution then to actually moving the needle on middle class families who've seen their situation get worse over the last several years? The, the, action, the way you really move the needle, and it's going to be a long time in coming, but we need really fundamental tax reform where we can lower rates, where we can knock out a, a lot of, of, of deductions that have been put in there by special interests over the years. America is crying out for real fundamental tax reform. Knocking out deductions, uh, lowering taxes leads you to the next question, which is where does the money come from? So where do you give in terms of coming to the middle here and uh, making, uh, making taxes lower, perhaps on the corporate level, uh, given the fact that the corporate level has the highest tax in the industrialized world? Well, that's another point, too, and there's a lot of uh, corporate uh, money overseas we need to bring back. We need to look at all of this. We need to look at the individual and the corporate tax structure. Is there way, are there ways to improve it? Absolutely it is. But by playing games with it, and mainly rhetoric and promising things you know that's not ever going to happen like the president has this past week, that's not the way to get things done in Washington. All right. We'll keep talking about this. Senator, good to have you on the program. Thanks Thank very you, much. We're gonna